Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be reacting to top 10 things only Canadians do and think it's normal. I am not very well versed in Canadian culture except the fact that I know that they love hockey. Yeah. But yeah, please don't forget to leave a like if you enjoy the content, comment on what you want to see next and subscribe for more content. Let's get into it. Number 10. Eat ketchup flavored chips. Whether you call them chips or crisps, Canada is a Commonwealth country after all, flavored potato chips are a common right. snack across the globe. I know globe. those What? From barbecue to bacon, plain, rippled, or even dill pickle, the flavors of this popular snack run the gamut. However, one flavor oh, is notoriously it. famous for being available almost exclusively in Canada. Ketchup. That is nice. Mm. It's not ketchup. Definitely not ketchup. Nicer than ketchup. Yeah, it is. The condiment flavored treat is a huge favorite of Canadians because it's delicious and one that often confuses visitors from other countries. Although its origins are a little fuzzy, it was likely inspired by the long standing pairing of ketchup and another potato based oh. food, French fries. It's the powder or the seasonings, mm. but it's working. There you go. Either way, it's one of many unique food items that many Canucks seem to long for. Yo, I'm definitely going to the Number nine. Uh, gas station and see if I can find those. I know they have a lot of uh, chips over there. I'm going to try to see if I can find those. I've never had chips dipped in ketchup. For shorts in cold weather. Yeah, the stereotypes are true. Canadian winters can be bitterly cold. But what many may not know is that the climate goes extreme on both ends. The government of Canada issued a warning today about a dangerous condition that seems to be spreading farther north thanks to global warming. White guys wearing shorts all winter. Sure, some places might dip below minus 40 Wait, in the winter, but some summers can in, see high. Like that winter. I'm glad I live in Memphis because Memphis doesn't get as cold as the other part of the, 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 the United States. I cannot support the cold, the snow, I don't like snow. I like it on TV, but I don't like it in real life. So this is going to be a problem for me visiting Canada. Highs of 104 wow. degrees Fahrenheit or above 40 in Celsius, as Canadians would say. So with such a broad spectrum, it's no surprise that locals have acclimated to drastic changes in temperature. So much so that it's fairly common to catch someone wearing shorts that you'd likely associate with warmer weather in the winter. It's minus 20 out there today. Why in good heavens are you in shorts? I'm in shorts, yeah. Why is the big question? I guess I, guess I like the cold. After enduring the heavy cold for several months, some residents will break out the shorts and walk outside in sub-zero temperatures. No one's going skiing like that, but you may very well see someone walking to the store in the snow in shorts and sandals. Away, some cold. people with shorts out here, just some brave people. <laughs> oh oh my God. With shorts. Number eight, give their coins unique names. In 1987, a gold-colored coin was introduced to eventually mm -hmm. replace the Canadian $1 bill. Dollar coins will replace the bills that are now stuffed into fare boxes, reduce the number of quarters we have to carry around, and save Canadian transit authorities $2 million annually. Slightly larger than a quarter, the $1 coin depicts Queen Elizabeth II on one side, and on the other is a bird seen widely across the country, the loon, hence its cute nickname, Looney. In 1996, the $2 bill was also replaced with a coin that received its own moniker, the Toonie, as in the $2 bill was also replaced with a coin that received its own moniker, the Toonie, as in the number two and the loony, even though it has a polar bear on it. Introducing Canada's new $2 coin, change that counts. Among Canadians, these two coins Barney and their unique and, names are uh, quite treasured. What's our name? I remember Barney, but I don't remember her name. Third. It's federal currency, and you people talk about it like it's a Hanna-Barbera character. In fact, at the 2002 Winter Olympics, a lucky loony was hidden under the ice where both the Canadian men's and women's hockey teams won their gold medals. It became a piece of Canadian lore after a loony was hidden at center ice at the 2002 Salt Lake Winter Olympics as a good luck charm. Have you ever heard of a more Canadian story than that? Number six, 
send letters to Santa, who lives there. Every year, countless kids send letters to Santa Claus hoping to get their favorite toys for Christmas. Four-year-old Gavin isn't taking any chances. He's going straight to Santa with his list of Christmas wishes. Yes, lots of toys. You want lots of toys from Santa? For Canadian youngins, it's even easier given that Santa's address is actually really? in Canada. It even has its own special postal code, H-O-H-O-H-O. -O -O. Kids and kids at heart can send letters addressed to the North Pole in Canada and are guaranteed to receive a reply. How does he do it? No one's sure, but it's probably not all that hard for a guy who taught reindeer how to fly. Whether the North Pole is actually in Canada is currently under debate, but that certainly hasn't stopped thousands of kids from sending letters every year. The country's national mail carrier, Canada Post, makes use of volunteers, or Santa's elves, if you will, to help keep this program active year after year. So Canada Post has hired some special letter carriers to help out. They have lots of experience making deliveries, and they definitely know the way to the North Pole. Hey, there's Rudolph and the guys now. Number five, make oh. unencumbered visits to Cuba. Contrary to popular belief, residents of the United States are actually allowed to travel to Cuba if you're willing to jump through a series of hoops to get there. But due to the U.S. embargo on Cuba, tourism hasn't been permitted for years. The U.S., fearing communism's expansion, sets up the embargo to strangle Cuba's economy. Canadians, however, have not had any such restrictions. Cuba is often cited as one of the most popular destinations for Canadians who wish to escape the cold winter months. Canadians uh, enter and leave Cuba at twice the rate of any other nationality, including wow. Cubans themselves, which gives some idea uh, of just how dominant they are in the Cuban tourist market. Most major airports have direct flights so and countless the US inexpensive... The doesn't apply to Canadians, right? Yeah, it doesn't because they go there twice as much as anyone else. Inclusive packages have made it easy for Canadians to enjoy beaches, sun, and, if interested, cigars in this Caribbean destination. Blending the traditions of Spain, Africa, and its native peoples, and lit by the fires like of independence well. and revolution, the aromas, textures, and flavors of this Caribbean nation are like no other. Number four, celebrate Thanksgiving in October. A holiday to celebrate the harvest is fairly common around the world. But in modern media, we often hear about American Thanksgiving in November and the Black Friday sales and chaos really? that follow. Thanksgiving, I thought that was only an American uh, celebration. I didn't know that Canada also celebrated uh, Thanksgiving because I think Thanksgiving has to do with the American history. I think I'm not sure about the, the real history, but I think it has to do with American history. I didn't know Canadians celebrated too. Potatoes are ruined, potatoes are ruined. <laughs> For Canadians, the same Thanksgiving holiday is actually celebrated in October. Oh, right, I forgot. You guys are weird. You pronounce the word out, out. Seemingly originating in 1579 during Martin Frobisher's excursion to find the Northwest Passage, it slowly evolved as the years passed, often dubbed Canadian Thanksgiving to distinguish it from its U.S. counterpart. Canada is not the only country that celebrates it in October. The thing is, it's basically Wait, the exact same holiday. how many countries celebrate Thanksgiving? I thought it was an American tin. How? Or is it a Western, uh, a Western tin? Except earlier. Grenada, St. Lucia, and even Germany celebrate similar festivals that same month. And honestly, it's nice to have a longer break between this giant meal and the one in December. Is it better to have Thanksgiving one month before Christmas that the Americans do, or is it better to have it two, two months before as Canada does? Number three, are sorry about being sorry. Ask virtually anyone around the globe to describe a Canadian and they'll likely use one word, friendly. Canucks are widely considered some of the friendliest people in the world. Oh. Sorry there. Didn't yeah, see this you. is you just okay? this is isolation. I don't think this is actually real. There is no way that this is real. This is just an exaggeration. Yeah, this is a stereotype of Canadians that they are too nice, extremely polite. But then again, you go and find uh, yeah, those guys play hockey. They had people like Major Leo. They won the world. They they help won the world wars and all of that. Okay, sorry about that. So friendly, in fact, that we've been stereotyped for apologizing for almost anything and everything. 
It's become such an ingrained part of Canadian culture that the Ontario government had to pass the Apology Act of 2009, which stated that an apology does not automatically comprise an admission of guilt. Well, this is a mugging. So, uh, what? Yeah, I'm sorry about that. If I could just get that wallet right there. It's one of the more quirky aspects of Canadian culture that certainly distinguishes us from other countries, who shall remain nameless. Sorry, we're just too polite to call them out. I must say, it's thinking about America. Sorry. I think that they just don't know how to say it because they never do it. Or they just like blame it on the nearest person and or country. Yeah. They just do that. Number two, buy milk in bags. At one time, the milkman came to your house and dropped off your bottles of milk. Oh, it's only the milkman. Hey, maybe I should be a milkman. As cartons became the norm, people got used to buying them in stores. For Canadians, the shift from the imperial measuring system to metric also brought something new. Milk in bags. <laughs> I've never seen it before. It's what so you, dangerous. What do you mean? Why? Why would you put it in a bag? As companies were shifting all of their containers to new sizes, milk bags were easy to change. Quickly enough, bagged milk became quite popular and is still widely used today. Canadians aren't the only ones who use it either. You know, if you want to save some for yourself, you can always just kind of... <sighs> like sucking on a teat. Quite literally, actually. <laughs> yeah. China, Israel, South Africa, and even Argentina all make use of the arguably more environmentally friendly container. But cut that corner hole too big and you are in for an utterly disastrous bowl of morning shreddies. Your milk comes in bags. Bags. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, sing national oh. anthem in both languages. Fun fact, the original O Canada national anthem was actually written in French and then translated to English in 1906. Oh, and since then, the lyrics of the anthem have been updated occasionally to reflect the changing times. But one thing that hasn't changed is how both English and French are frequently intermixed during public performances. Often sung at sporting and other major events, it is fairly common for some portions of the anthem to be sung in English, then switch to French or vice versa, and then back several times. I like to call this the hockey version. Given how both are official languages of the Great White North, it's a small way to showcase how the country leverages both of these great languages. Did you enjoy this yeah, video? That was, Check out that these was other pretty uh, informative. I didn't know a lot of things about Canada. I still have a lot to learn. Okay, I just see a video that's saying 10 reasons to move to Canada. I mean, we may as well check it out. Hopefully, it's a good one. There, there are some good ones out there. But yeah, that was a nice video. I've learned some new things. For example, I didn't know that they sung the national anthem in both French and English. And also see that the Canadian flag has a leaf. And the Toronto Maple Leafs also have a leaf as a logo. Is that is, is there a correlation over there, or it's just uh, happened to be like that? But yeah, I'll point to the video. I'm recording here. Uh, don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed it. Comment on what you see next, and subscribe for more content.